And finally, the day of the trip arrived. We went to the airport early in the morning by car. When my mother-in-law and the others got out of the car, she suddenly said something unbelievable. When I got out as well, Well then, Mary, please stay behind. Huh? This is a family trip, you know. Since you, the daughter-in-law, are not part of the family, there's no need for you to join us, right? Come on. It's such a waste of parking fees for this car. You were the one who rode in it, right? I... I can't believe that. My name is Mary. I'm a 28 years old office worker. I have been married to my husband, Darren, for two years. I met my husband through work, as he was working for a business partner of the company I work for. Working together brought us closer, and that's how our relationship started. After two years of dating, we got married. We both work and are a dual income couple, and we don't have any children yet. We were having a decent, harmonious, and happy newlywed life. However, one day, my husband approached me and said that he wanted us to live together with his parents. When I asked why, he explained that it was because his mother had some difficulty with her legs. He wanted to live together to ensure her well-being as she grew older. I understood and agreed to the reason. The truth is, I lost both of my parents in an accident when I was in the second year of high school. Afterwards, I was taken in by my uncle who lived in a different region. I continued my education at the university in the same area and later found employment at the company there. Of course, I'm trying to repay my uncle and his wife for raising me and I'm doing as much as I can in terms of school and parental support. But even though I want to repay my parents for the fruits of their labor, I can no longer do so. I wanted my husband to live his life without regrets considering my own circumstances. However, I never expected that I would suffer so much as a result of this cohabitation. Hey Mary, it's nice to see you here. Thank you, Darren. I'm glad that we decided to live together. At first, the in-laws were very kind and warmly welcomed me. I thought we could all live happily together. But the in-laws quickly changed their attitude. Mary, how long do you plan on continuing to work? Um, I don't intend to quit my job. What? What are you saying? You are so insolent for a daughter-in-law. Um, as a daughter-in-law, you should take care of the household and support your husband as he goes to work. Well, that seems a bit outdated. Don't talk back to me! My mother-in-law outright denied my right to work and made every effort to make me quit my job. I discussed this with my husband. However, to my surprise, my husband's reaction was to side with my mother-in-law. Well. I understand what my mother is saying. Huh? Because my mother is usually alone at home during the day, and she's also been having trouble with her legs. She was relieved when you came to support her, but she felt betrayed, didn't she? I... I see. There's some truth to what my husband is saying. But even if that's the case, I think there is a way to communicate it better. I started feeling anxious about whether I could manage everything smoothly in the long run. However, I couldn't help but wonder if there was a way to support my mother-in-law without giving up my job, as I strongly believed in the importance of making an effort to accommodate her. I tried my luck and asked my company, and surprisingly, they said remote work was possible. I immediately applied and started working remotely. I assured my husband and in-laws that I could support them if anything came up while working from home. However, no matter how many times I explained, my mother-in-law kept misunderstanding, thinking that I had finally quit my job. Well, I hope she gradually understands. However, 
Opting for remote work turned out to be a big mistake. Hey Mary, how long are you going to stay locked up in your room? Um, Mom, I'm actually working. Stop talking nonsense and quickly start cleaning. Once that's done, clean the bathroom and toilet. And make lunch too. But, but... My mother-in-law treated me as if she had hired a maid and bossed me around. I had no choice but to squeeze work in between. And after getting dinner and finishing household chores, I had to complete the remaining work leaving me sleep deprived every day. And not only my mother-in-law, but even my husband and father-in-law started harassing me, influenced by something they were told. It's always the same kind of dishes. I wish there was more variety since you are at home. It can be helped. Mary isn't particularly skilled in household chores. She lost her parents early and was taken in by her uncle. So she probably never learned cooking or anything. She's really a useless wife. I'm so troubled. They mocked and laughed at me in my in-law's home. It infuriated me that even my husband made fun of me. Who was the one asking for cohabitation anyway? And this is even though I switched to remote work after being told to quit my job. And my mother-in-law claimed to have leg problems and would skip on doing the chores. But when invited for tea by friends, she would walk without hesitation. One day, I asked her, Are your legs okay? And she responded with an angry outburst. Am I not allowed to take a break and go out? Even though I take care of household chores, nobody appreciates it. Nobody truly understands that I have a job and to make matters worse, they even make fun of my relatives. I have completely lost trust in the people from my in-law's house. I ended up feeling distrust toward my own family. If something else happens, maybe divorce is the only option. I can't believe I've started thinking like that. Then one day, out of the blue, I was called by my in-laws to their house. They all had smiles on their faces. But I had a terrible premonition. And then, my mother-in-law spoke up. In two weeks, it will be our 30th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. So, Mary, I have a favor to ask you. What is it? I want you to plan a grand celebration for our 30th anniversary, like a lavish family trip to New York City. Huh? Me? You always put in so much effort for the family, right, Mary? We all appreciate it. Mom. I want you... I want to leave it in your capable hands. If possible, arrange for luxurious accommodations and upscale meals. I see. We are going too, but the main character will be Mom. Wait, can I join too? Yeah. That's why I'm counting on you for the reservations and planning. I believe you can come up with a good plan. Oh, I see. I never expected to receive compliments from my family. This might also be an opportunity to get closer to my in-laws. I was surprised to suddenly be entrusted with such an important task. But I want to meet the expectations. I had the perfect hotel in mind. So I immediately made the reservations and booked the flight. And finally, the day of departure arrived. We drove to the airport early in the morning. As my mother-in-law and the others got out of the car, my mother-in-law unexpectedly said something unbelievable. Well then, Mary, you can stay behind. Huh? Wait, am I not going with you? What are you talking about? You won't be coming alone, obviously. This is a family affair, you know. You're not part of the family, so you don't need to come. I looked at my husband. He joined his parents in agreement. Besides, it would be a waste of pay for parking this car. You can take it and go back. But I made all the arrangements for the hotel and flight, juggling between work and household chores. Don't act so entitled. And besides, 
I made a reservation for myself at the hotel. You can just cancel, can't you? But if you understand, go home right away and start cleaning. That's right. Make sure the house is spotless. If we come back and find anything dirty, we won't tolerate it. F fine, I understand. As I meekly said that, my in laws had smug expression on their faces, laughing as they entered the airport. Inside the car, I took a deep breath. I will never forgive them. Anger towards my in laws welled up inside me. I had been striving to cherish the bonds of family, but in reality, they saw me not as a family member, but as a convenient maid like presence they could use. That's all they saw me as. After returning home, I immediately packed my belongings and headed to my uncle and aunt's house. They were surprised to see me suddenly return with a large suitcase. But upon hearing the story, they were furious. I immediately contacted the hotel and informed them that I wanted to cancel one reservation. Afterward, I quickly got in the car and headed to the airport, flying straight to New York City. If I went now, I could arrive at the hotel during the time when my in laws would be checking in. My in laws had been planning their New York City trip all this time. According to their plan, they would do various sightseeing activities in New York City and check into the hotel around 4 p.m. Then, around 2 p.m., I arrived in New York City. Afterward, I went to the hotel and waited for my in-laws in the lounge. When my in-laws entered the hotel, they had an incredibly satisfied expression on their faces. They walked in with a lack of manners, making it obvious right away. Well, it's fine then. Surprisingly, not having that woman with us turned out to be a good thing. <laughs> Her expression when she found out she couldn't come was priceless. <laughs> and then, my in-laws went to the reception desk to check in. I quietly approached and watched the situation from behind. We have a reservation for three people. It appears that you have reserved a suite. Oh, a suite! Amazing! Wow, I'm looking forward to it. Um, there seems to be a cancellation for one person, but please note that the cancellation on the day of arrival incurred a cancellation fee of 100% of the accommodation cost. What? Wasn't it prepaid? Payment is made directly on site. Jeez, I take back what I said. I didn't hear anything about having to pay now. She really has no sense of responsibility. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. About that woman, since the trip we've been on feels great, so we'll let her off the hook. By the way, how much is it? Including the cancellation fee, the total accommodation cost is $13,486. What? what? $13,486? Well, why is it so expensive? Well, it's calculated based on a rate of $3,457 for a two-night, three-day stay for one person. With three people, it amounts to $10,375. And then, there is the cancellation fee, which is a full amount for today, $1,728, and 80% for tomorrow, which is $1,383. Adding it all up, it comes to $13,486. No, no, that's not what I meant. Uh, are they trying to rip us off? This place? We are providing top quality service at this price point. I believe you will be completely satisfied once you stay with us. Even if you say that, we can't afford to pay $13,486! Are you considering cancelling them? If that's the case, today's portion would be $6,950 and tomorrow's portion would be $5,532. So the total cancellation fee for the two night stay would be $12,447. That, that's... 
Are you saying it would still be $12,447 even if we don't stay? The woman. Where does she make the reservation? I will call her right now and confront her. There's no need for that. When I spoke from behind, my in-laws were surprised. You! Why are you here? No, more importantly, it's about the accommodation fee. Hey you! Take responsibility and pay for the accommodation fee. I refuse. Hey, don't mess around. Take responsibility. But I'm not part of this family, am I? The truth is, I was planning to pay for the accommodation myself as a gift to you, mom. Then just pay. No, I won't pay. You never accepted me as part of the family, treated me like a maid, and even mocked my relatives. I came here so that I can divorce you. Divorce? Saying that, I handed the divorce papers to my husband. I will become a stranger to all of you, so I won't pay any cancellation fees. I won't allow that! You couldn't afford to pay in the first place, but you purposely caused trouble for us, didn't you? That's right, I'm sure of it. She's just an ordinary employee and has less money than me. Unfortunately, I used to be a regular customer here. That's a story from my childhood, though. Um? Uh? Is the beauty treatment ready by now? Yes, Miss Jackson. We can arrange an esthetician in dining room anytime. Alright, I'm going back to my room soon. Wait, wait a minute! Who are you? You were just an orphan who lost her parents in an accident and were taken in by your uncle and aunt, right? But her uncle is a civil servant, right? He shouldn't have that kind of money. Since this is the last time, I will tell you. When I was young, my parents started a business and ran a company. By the time I was born, the business was doing well and we lived a prosperous life. We used to come to this hotel every year from when I was little until my second year of high school when my parents passed away. If it weren't for the plane crash accident or road that they were involved in, well, I would have been here with my parents, enjoy their wealth and assets. But even so, I accepted the reality of my parents' death and worked hard to pave my own way. Of course, I'm grateful for all the assistance I received from my uncle and aunt, and I intend to repay them in the future. I was putting in effort to nurture our relationship and build a bond with your parents after our marriage. Until I was betrayed in such a manner, I had actually been contemplating covering all the expenses. But I won't forgive you all. Whether you cancel or stay, you will pay for your own accommodation. And please, let's get a divorce. Oh, I won't accept anything other than divorce. By the way, I've been recording all the abusive and emotionally manipulative remarks you and your family have made to me. So if you choose to fight back with a lawyer and make any divorce demands, I will fight you in court. They stood there in stunned silence and disbelief. I returned to the room, ignoring my in-laws, and was treated to a spa session. By the way, you may wonder why I had enough money to pay this hotel bill as a gift. It's because I inherited a considerable fortune from my parents' life insurance and other assets. But I had decided not to use this money for daily expenses and instead save it for crucial moments. And I had decided to work as a responsible working adult and live a normal life considering that money is non-existent. This time, I decided to be a little mean to my in-laws and show them where I stand by using that money. I might have been a bit immature, but I was so angry with my in-laws that I wanted to express it. Later, my husband and I started divorce negotiations through a lawyer. In the end, my husband decided to pay $13,486 in order to stay at the hotel instead of canceling the reservation, which apparently depleted a significant amount of their money. Therefore, it seems he opted to agree to the divorce rather than going through an expensive trial. And so, 
I successfully finalized the divorce with my husband. I also received compensation for the emotional distress caused by the emotional abuse. It seems that everyone in my in-laws' family not only felt embarrassed at that time, but also suffered significant financial and emotional damage. They apparently experienced a lot of damage. It's really satisfying. On the other hand, I continue with my work as a magazine editor and move to New York City as planned. Currently, I rent an apartment that suits my salary and lead a modest lifestyle. As for the inheritance I received from my father, I'm managing a part of it to further increase my assets for my retirement. Having experienced a failed marriage once, I want to take a good look at myself and embark on various things that I want to do from now on. When it comes to romance, I hope to meet someone special along the way. For now, I just want to enjoy my life in New York City, which I haven't experienced in a long time. Why do the in-laws pick on their wives? And I don't understand why even the husband goes along with that. Essentially, the husband should be protecting his wife. And if he had protected it, the husband could have also enjoyed the benefits of her inheritance. They let go of a feast that could have been a big catch, didn't they? Well, it's their own fault, really. I thought it was admirable that Mary wanted to live without relying on the money from her parents. I hope she can meet a wonderful partner next time. Thank you for watching until the end. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's meet again in the next video.